Hey, Phantomaniacs, welcome to the newest unboxing here on the Needless Things YouTube channel. We are interrupting these scheduled spooky reviews for an emergency G.I. Joe Classified Series toy review. Uh, it is Twin Tuesday. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at Tomax and Samot, even though they are different figures. Uh, we're going to hit both of them in one review. You can see this absolutely fantastic art on the side. Uh, hopefully we will get nice classified series suit bodies at some point. You know Hasbro can't resist a suit body. Uh, but for now, we've got them in their traditional, whoops, uh, their traditional costumes, uniforms, whatever you want to call them. Uh, their extensive enterprises workout wear, I don't know. Uh, and then Thursday, I am going to be reviewing the other figure from this set, Stalker. But you got to wait till Thursday for that one. Uh, so, Tomax and Samot. Uh, I loved the original figures when I was a kid. We'll be taking a closer look at those in just a minute as well. So, these were a big deal for me because I just, with designs like this, it's a matter of I can't wait to see what Classified does with this design because upscaled, obviously much improved articulation, hype, uh, heightened detail, uh, different portraits, like just everything about Classified Series doing a classic G.I. Joe design is exciting to me. As much as I do like updated looks, uh, I, you know, I liked some of the blackout designs. I thought they were cool and different, uh, especially now that we know that they're going to go back and hit more classic looks. So I, I think there's room in Classified for everything, for tradi for traditional looks, for updated looks, for weird stuff we've never even seen before. Bring it all. Uh, so anyway, uh, let's take a look at the back. We've got the new box art on the back. It's fine. Whatever. At this point, you know, th this the original Classified Series box art was so exciting because it was like, wow, what are the possibilities? What are we going to see? What's going to happen? Uh, you know, now we're into the line. And I'm not going to say this is no longer exciting, but now the excitement comes from the reveals and the renders and the pipeline announcements and, and all that sort of thing. So it's just, we're in a different place now with these. Uh, all right. On the side of the box, you can see it's number 44 and number 45. Uh, Tomax is 44, Zamot is 45. And they have got different specialties, which I didn't necessarily expect. Uh, you can go to gijoe.com and find out exactly what each of these symbols uh, stands for. Uh, but you can see Zamot is an enthusiast uh, for astrology. Uh, Tomax collects skulls and knives. Uh, Zamot loves punching people and money. Uh, Tomax, what, what the heck is that? He likes obstacle courses, I guess, uh, and throwing stars. Uh, and then finally, Zamot is, he's a puppeteer. This is our first uh, puppeteer uh, acknowledgement in G.I. Joe. So very exciting there. Uh, and maybe we'll see a future version of Zamot that comes with some uh, glove puppets or some marionettes or something. Uh, all right. So let's go ahead and get the, oh, uh, like I said, the box art's awesome. And then each twin has, you know, their unique stance and art. Very cool. So let, let's get them out of there. I'm going to start with Zamot. These came from Amazon, actually. Uh, I've mentioned to you guys before the way that I play my pre-order roulette. Typically, oh, and it's got the standard Cobra insert. Uh, typically, what I will do is order from Pulse, from Amazon, and from Big Bad Toy Store. And uh, whoever gets it to me first gets my money. And I will cancel the other pre-orders. And I realize maybe that's a little bit of a mercenary type thing on my part. But, you know, if you want my money, give me my product first. It, it is now a race with how these things work. Uh, and I would love, you know, if, if I had my, if everybody was delivering at the same time, uh, even though they're a little higher priced, well, you know what? I got to say, I'd probably go with Pulse out of all of them. But I, I just, I love Big Bad Toy Store. I would love to buy, you know, if, if everything were equal, I would buy all of my toys from Big Bad. All right. Got a decent little accessory loadout with one key. Oh, if, if you're wondering what the heck, heck these divots are, 
uh, Mojo that I reviewed yesterday was sitting here for about a week after the review, even though it's only been a day for you guys. It's been a week for Mojo. Uh, and those little clear things have been digging into my my opening surface for a week now. Those those will go away at some point. Okay, so let's take a look. Obviously, uh, you know what? Let's get them both out and we'll just do the comparison. That makes more sense, right? Uh, so the big omission with the accessories, obviously, is they don't have the zip line that the original figures came with that as a kid I thought was such a cool thing. As an adult, it's you know a little a little ridiculous, but they do have a circus backstory to them. Uh, they are, you know, they look I still believe to a certain extent that these characters were based somewhat on the uh, circus twins from Octopussy, the James Bond movie. I can definitely see that in their, you know, appearance and their presentation. Uh, and, you know, I don't know that that's true, but that's just kind of what I've always thought a little bit, uh, especially now that they've got these knives with them and they do not have the zip line, but I, on the one hand, it would be cool to have like a classified scale zip line. Uh, but on the other hand, what, what am I going to do with that? Really? And where would they even store such a thing? Uh, okay. So let's take a look. You know what? Why don't we first look at the original figures? Uh, just such unique, interesting looking figures. I always love these designs. Uh, they are very, you know, the red and the blue. I mean, they're, they fit right in with Cobra and they're, they're gaudy. They're flashy. They're just very interesting figures. And I think it wasn't until much, much later that we, I mean, obviously the original, original line, we didn't get suited versions. Uh, I think later on during the like, G.I. Joe versus Cobra or Valor versus Venom era. Uh, we might have gotten some suited Tomax and Samot figures in one of those box sets, or, or maybe two of those box sets now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, I think you might have had to buy two of the same set. One came with Tomax, one came with Zamot, but all the other figures were the same. Anyway, we're not talking about suited versions. We're talking about Crimson Sash, Shoulder Armor, uh, and they look really, really fantastic. I will say this. Their silver is a little dull-ish. Let's take a look at just one of them. Get a close-up of the silver. I, I kind of wish it was more metallic looking. And I'm not talking necessarily about um, like that metallic... Uh, with the almost texture looking at the sparkly metallic, you know, and you know what? I, I would be okay if this silver were the same silver as Destro's head. Maybe. I don't know. It doesn't look bad, but it just, it looks a little more plasticky than metally to me. Whereas the original figures, I believe that, finish it look oh sorry i'm sitting here looking at the figures and not at my screen the finish is a little more metallic on those original figures i don't know if you can really tell in the video or not like i said it's i mean it's not bad by any means and as far as the sculpt i think the sculpt is perfection i don't think they possibly could could have been executed any better uh, I love the way, I mean, the articulation here is standard classified series articulation. Uh, you've got, you know, honestly, the most aesthetically pleasing and functional articulation uh, mass market on the mass market today. And just everything works really nicely. Uh, you've got, rather than the cut joint at the waist, you've got that nice ball joint. You've got the drop-down hips. Uh, that I know a lot of people have had issues, like where they feel like the ratcheting, like they're going to shear off uh, that ball that's right in there. 
I've I've never really felt that with any of my classified series figures. I haven't had any issues, and maybe I'm just lucky. Um, I love the boot, the way they've designed that knee pad on the boot. You've got the double jointed knee, uh, and then that knee pad actually extends up. It is part of the boot sculpt, so you have that movement of the knee pad. I think that's very very cool. Rather than if this had been part of that knee, I think that looks great. Uh, the Cobra sort of thigh pad uh, goes up. You can see there's a difference in the way that it's proportioned and designed between the two figures. Uh, and I really like that it looks like it goes up a little bit higher on this one. Just a great look. Uh, he's got uh, sheaths for both of those knives. Uh, this piece is a separate loose piece because... Both of our twins share everything is the same on these guys. So this is interesting. I say everything is the same. It's actually our common parts. And I'm just talking out loud here because this is interesting to me to think about. And I'm moving that wristband down just a little bit. That's a separately tooled piece. So that can be, uh, you can see where you can see the, the skin around the top of the glove there, you can push that piece down just a little bit and get a better look, in my opinion, where it's just covering up the top of the glove. Looks good. Uh, so shared parts, uh, the torsos are shared just with that Cobra Tampo uh, on different sides. Uh, the arms, oh, same thing with the, uh, the glove on the other side here. You can see the skin but you can take that separately tooled part and just push it down just a little bit. And there you go. Now you've got more of a complete glove look going on. Although I believe that higher part should be on the outside. Well, let's take a look if you can even tell on this one. No, this, well, it, maybe it's, sorry. Once again, I'm looking at the figure. Um, slightly raised a little bit on the outside. So yeah, you just want to take that and swivel that little cuff piece around to the outside there. Uh, and then over here, you can see you've got some sculpt. You've got a little bit of technology or whatever. So that you can turn around however you want as well, because that part is separate. Um, we'll do the same thing over here. Just get that glove in the right spot, get that wristband. To where I like I like to have the little technology piece there, kind of on the outside. Uh, although it might make more sense for it to be on the inside because if he's going to be looking at it, uh, actually I guess that is easier. Okay, so back to our shared part: shared torso, shared arms, uh, shared thighs, and then shared feet. But you can see the boots. I was wondering if this might be a separate piece and then that way they just swap which side that's on. Oh, it is. You can tell this is a separate little piece. So the boots are shared. It's just that uh, the sheath and the little pocket deal are attached on opposite sides. So a decent bit of shared tooling. Uh, so they look as the same and as different as these twins should look. And now I'm trying to remember, Samot has the scar, right? Yes, Tomax is the unscarred one. Uh, so Tomax, you can see on your left here, and Samot on your right, where they have slightly different expressions, but the same portrait. I love that their hair is also parted on different sides. Uh, get the scar over here, which is, you know, from the original figure, but also just kind of a nice G.I. Joe thing. Look at that profile. These guys are just fantastic. Unique, awesome, very, very well done figures to put on your shelf. Uh, very happy with these. Okay, so let's take a look at accessory-wise what we've got going on here. We'll go ahead and... Uh, We've got two daggers, these wild, like, wicked curved daggers, which 
I mean, it would be horrible to get stabbed with any kind of knife, but those seem like they're going to be even worse. And then those are going to fit in their sheaths. Chances are what I'll do is have one of them, j just like the box art, one of them with the gun and one of them with the knives. Uh, so those fit in perfectly and stay put very nicely. I like that. I like that hip sheath there. And it's, it's cool uh, that they are differently placed because on the original figures, you can see they've got that dagger uh, down there on the boot. There is no dagger on the hip. So that's a little addition there. And that's the kind of thing I like. And actually, I just noticed we've got sheath, pouch, sheath, pouch. So nice little bit of asymmetry going across both twins there. Uh, and then we have a submachine gun of some kind. If you would like to tell me in the comments what this is based on, or if it is an actual specific gun, please do go ahead. You know, you guys know, uh, I don't really care about gun types. I just care if the guns look cool. And this gun looks cool, especially once you attach the included magazine that I believe goes in like so. Oh, and clips into place really nicely too. It goes a, a good distance up into the body of that gun. Uh, and then you've got a suppressor that plugs right into the front. Also very, very securely. Uh, so you've got a really nice submachine gun going on there. We're going to give that to the other twin. Now, obviously, I've got four knives and two submachine guns. But I'm going to hand this to him. And this is... Uh, oh, this is interesting. Okay. Well, we're going to do this first. First, we're going to put that submachine gun. You can see the trigger finger goes right into that trigger guard. It's in there very securely. Looks great. Uh, you can hold it how you would hold a gun if you were firing a gun. Uh, very nice. Uh, but this is, you know, sort of reminiscent of their original giant, silly, oversized guns, uh, but looks much, much cooler and, and better proportioned. Uh, so let's now... Oh, here's the one issue, is there's nowhere to store the gun if you have one of the twins holding the knives. So that... Uh, not a huge issue. Uh, let's get his knives in place. So I guess what I may end up doing uh, instead is just have him mirroring poses. But here's what I just noticed. Look at the way the uh, fingers are posed. So you can actually have him holding that throwing knife like that. That is very cool. What a, what a great detail. And that's one of the things I think the uh, classified team is doing so well is giving us little details like that, little uh, bits of personality that you just don't see from other action figure lines. That's fantastic. Okay. So Tomax... And Zaymont, the Paoli twins, in hand, looking fantastic. But there is one more thing that I would like to take a look at with these guys. Uh, and I'm just going to do it with one of them. So we will take uh, Tomax here. And we'll see. Oh, that head does not want to pop off. So hang on just a second for me. And 30 seconds of heat, and that head popped right off. I do not recommend trying to get it off without heating it up. Uh, you got a decently sturdy barbell, but you could just rip that right out. Or you could end up with this popping out of the neck, and it's a pain to get that back into place. Uh, so you might be wondering, why in the world would you take that man's head off? Well, here's why in the world I would take that man's head off. Is I have here a hammerhead figure from Marvel Legends, and I need to know if this 
hammerhead suit, which I think is absolutely perfect for the Paoli twins, uh, will accommodate this head. And you know what I'm looking at? Right off the bat, you can see that is not going to work. Uh, not without some some Dremel work or something. Uh, because that ball is significantly larger than that one. So right away we know, without some alteration, which is not something I'm a big fan of doing, uh, that plan isn't going to get it. But I also have, from the Marvel Legends Spider-Man line, a J. Jonah Jameson head, or a J. Jonah Jameson. Oh, man, also... Too large, much too large, twice as big as it needs to be. Very interesting. Because I have, uh, in the past, Marvel Legends heads have been compatible with G.I. Joe Classified Series uh, bodies. Because I have a set of Cobra Troopers with Marvel Legends heads on them, just to give a different kind of unit uh, in the Cobra Troops. But that is not going to happen with these guys. So I will continue. Uh, if you follow Needless Things, uh, Needless Things channel on Instagram, uh, I will update if I find suited bodies that do work for these figures, because I do. I would like to have that as an option. Um, but for the time being, this is what we've got, and I think they're fantastic. I. Like I said, if the silver were a little more silver, I'd be happier. But overall, like they look great. The colors are wonderful. I can't wait to have some more crimson figures to go with them. Uh, I think once again, uh, the classified team has really put out an awesome product. Thank you for watching, you guys. Uh, like, subscribe, share, tell your friends about Needless Things. Check the links in the video to buy these figures and to buy yourself a Needless Things shirt. Uh, we've got a brand new spooky design that I am particularly fond of. Oh, and you know what? I completely forgot to mention. Check out Audible Interlude, a G.I. Joe podcast available every Friday wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, thanks for watching, you guys, and come back tomorrow for another spooky review, and then Thursday I'll review Stalker. Until then, yo, Joe! Oh. Smash that like button if you like needless things.